prayer will not make a BMW pop up in your driveway. Neither will it make pop up, for instance, a national political leader pledged to transform the liberal republic into something like the Kingdom of France when it was ruled by King St. Louis or the Republic of Ecuador when Gabriel Garcia Moreno was president. And if it somehow did, who can believe he would be elected by a majority of voters <coughs> over a candidate promising to protect a woman's freedom of choice, the right of same-sex couples to marriage, and a military strong enough to defend freedom at home, uh, if it's attacked at home, and spread its joys to other peoples who supposedly want it so much they'll welcome its arrival even by means of airstrikes. To believe that is silly. Poor old Ron Paul never got anywhere, really, and all he wanted to do was return to the U.S. Constitution. We have to stop fantasizing about achieving anything substantive by means of electoral politics, except at a local level, where here and there it may be realistic. In terms of the larger society, there is no quick fix. What we have to do is think long-term, like Antonio Gramsci, frequently referenced by Bob Hickson in his presentation. Our brother mentioned him earlier today. Gramsci was an Italian communist back in the 1920s who was imprisoned by Mussolini. He saw there was no possibility of Italy becoming as he wished not any time soon, not with Mussolini in power. Uh, what could be done, he saw, was subvert what remained of Christian culture so that in 50 years or 100 today, there would be a society closer to the one he and others like him wanted and not merely in Italy. <coughs> What can we do to make society 50 or 100 years from now closer to what it should be? Asking the question and finding answers does not involve looking into a crystal ball. We cannot foresee what institutions will exist in America in the future and how they will work, but we can hope that uh, whatever things are like, uh, whatever the institutions and way of life, they will be infused with ideas and beliefs that are not as alien to Christianity as those prevailing today, and we should labor to that end. Who knows? The effort might even result in, a, in an America that is Catholic or Catholic again. In any case, toward that end, and to identify issues or causes that are more immediate, ones to which we can devote ourselves now, because our number is few and resources meager, and they should be causes that already have some traction, that are already promoted by others less marginal than ourselves, and whose coattails we can grab onto. Obviously, the causes must also be at least consistent with Catholic beliefs and ideas, even if they don't fully embody them. At the top of my proposed agenda, I have put environmental protection slash work. The slash work is an awkward attempt to signal that I have in mind more than simply the environmental movement whose members are derided by knee-jerk conservatives as tree-huggers. Although I believe common cause often can be made with them. And this becomes evident when you see, as have I, 
a display of books in the window of a health food store with a sign pointing to them that says, Natural Family Planning, natural underline. Those tree huggers have taken a step away from artificial contraception, a step never taken, polls have shown it for decades, by the great majority of today's couples calling themselves Catholic. The next word out of the conservative's mouth after tree huggers will be jobs. Another chemical plant, another mountain leveled by strip mining, another gas pipeline, another another farmland paved over to become another Walmart parking lot <coughs> will produce more jobs, so it is claimed. And this gets me closer to what I mean by putting environmental protection at the top of my agenda. At the risk of diverting us and having somebody holler fascist, let me observe that when for a few years in the 1940s a government existed in France that was so imbued with Catholic ideas and beliefs that abortionists, like all murderers, were subject to the death penalty. That government replaced the nation's revolutionary slogan of liberty, equality, fraternity with work, family, fatherland. Note the juxtaposition of work and family. Next to family, what is more important than work? It is what we spend our life doing or should. In this regard, I'll add that the French government of which I speak wasn't putting jobs or full employment in the nation's motto. It intended that France would remain what she still was at that time, a primarily agricultural nation. Now, the country had this in common with the last true conservatives we've had in this country, the Southern Agrarians, uh, leading figures of whom uh, produced the famous collection of essays, I'll Take My Stand, a collection that Alan Tate, one of the contributors, wanted to entitle Tracks Against Communism so that the book would be seen for what it really was, a defense of the historical Christian West, not simply an apologia for the traditional Southern way of life. After all, it wasn't simply in the American South that real work, strong families, and rootedness were under attack by modernity. Work, Pope Pius XI wrote, is, quote, decreed by providence for the good of man's soul and body, 